So there are a lot of little differences between AGS 101 and AGS 001 consoles. And uh, believe me when I say I'm not trying to gatekeep. I, I really am not. I'd love to spread knowledge. But if you come to this video trying to identify a Game Boy that you own and you're happy with and you can't tell the difference, just stop. Close the video. Close the tab. Whatever. This, this path only leads to heartbreak. Um, if you're trying to get, you know, background knowledge or trying to verify a purchase or even trying to figure out what to look for because you're looking for one model or another, then yeah, you know, this, I, I guess let's, let's talk about that during this video. Um, so straight to the point, there are three things to look at when trying to figure out if you have an AGS 101 or an AGS 001. Um, First off, an AGS-001 is the original release model. It has a front-lit screen that is widely regarded as bad. <laughs> and the AGS-101 is a hardware revision that was released very late into the life cycle of the SP that has a backlit screen um, marketed as the brighter screen. And it is widely regarded as the good screen. Um, I have opinions on that, but Let's, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, the first and most common way to tell the difference between the two is to just look at the label on the back. Assuming the console has not been reshelled or relabeled, you can determine what model it is by just simply looking at the label. You can see this one is an AGS-001. I know that is true. That is correct. This one is an AGS-101. That is true and correct. Uh, the labels look different, not because one is a 101 and the other is a 001, but because this is a US model and this is a Japanese model. The labels look very different depending on the region of the console. And by the way, Game Boys are region free. You can buy literally any Game Boy from any region and it'll play any other region game. I mean, there are some restrictions, like you can't play Game Boy Color games on an original Game Boy, but you can play Japanese games on a European unit, US games on a Japanese unit, whatever, you name it, they're 100% region free. Uh, the only difference might be the charger for SPs. But anyway, failing the label, let's say it's missing the label or you think the seller's kind of shifty and might have relabeled it, we can look at the color. I have, I chose these two units because of this specific color. This is something that that really that I struggled with when I was first getting into this. Uh, in the US, they released a graphite model, AGS-101, but they also released an Onyx model, AGS-001. Um, the Onyx one is the darker of the two. It's really hard to tell the difference unless you have them side by side, especially if you're just looking at pictures. Uh, in hand, I think it's a little bit more obvious, but if you're watching this video, you're probably looking at pictures. Um, look at the buttons. On the backlit version, the 101, the buttons are black and therefore darker than the rest of the console. On the 001, the buttons are gray and lighter than the rest of the console. It's easier to tell with lighting, which leads us to the last thing to look at, the screens. When the screen is off, it is the easiest way to tell because the backlit console will look dark gray or black, whereas the frontlit console will look very light gray. Now it is possible to manipulate that with lighting, so it's not a good idea to rely on any one of these options, but rather to look at all three of the options. Uh, three of these options. Now, I want to circle back to the color of the console. It is very important to pay attention to region when we're talking about non reshelled consoles. In the US at least, the pearl pink AGS Game Boy Advance SP was an AGS uh, 101 exclusive. In Japan, it was an AGS 001 exclusive. So if you're buying a pink console that is a Japanese region unit, it is for sure going to be a 001 unless, again, it's been relabeled or reshelled or something like that. Um, and like I said, 
every region is the same, so the only difference between the regions is literally the label, and maybe the color versions that it came in. Uh, which, again, all Japanese AGS zero, or no, all Japanese Game Boy Advance SPs are AGS 001s. They, Japan just didn't get the backlit version of the Game Boy Advance SP. Don't ask me. I don't know. But there you go. Um, depending on which specific console you're looking at and which specific region, it, it gets complicated. But if you're looking at US region consoles, uh, there was Pearl Blue, Pearl Pink, and Onyx. That's it. There are a few limited editions as well, like um, uh, the SpongeBob and the Pikachu console. And I think there are a few more, I don't know offhand. Uh, but it's not best, it's, it's not always a good idea to just look at the color of the console and use that to determine it because every single color is available in the aftermarket. Uh, graphite is uncommon, but I have seen them. Pikachu is very common and Spongebob is very uncommon, but I have seen those as well. Um, so again, j take all things in consideration. Uh, if you have any questions, post a picture of the thing to like the Game Boy Discord. They'll be able to help you out. But why this matters. And here's the part where I start ranting. Um, because in current year, uh, which as of the time of filming is late 2021, it kind of doesn't matter. Um, I haven't checked the prices in a while, but it doesn't, again, doesn't really matter because the prices might, th they'll be different from the time when I film this video to the time when you see this video and you're watching it. It doesn't matter. Uh, there are backlight kits that look heaps better than the original screens in both of these consoles. Um, Nintendo is known for using older and reliable, more reliable tech. Well, LCD technology was a very rapidly developing field of technology, um, and it changed quite significantly from 1990 to 2020. Uh, it's still changing today, and LCDs coming out now look heaps better than LCDs coming out 15 years ago. Um, so. Why do I say that? Because I think the AGS-101 is a bad looking console. Now we can sit here and argue all day over personal opinion and you know what? You like what you like, that's perfectly fine. I don't care. Um, objectively speaking, the 001 console is better until you start modding it. After you start modding it, it doesn't make a difference. Um, but the reason I say that is because this screen, because it is front lit, in that the light is placed in front of the screen, uh, you can use it in any lighting. It works perfectly fine in dark rooms, it works perfectly fine out in direct sunlight, whereas the backlit console, unfortunately there's just not quite enough brightness and the viewing angles are, you know, kinda kind of bad, uh, given that it is a very old screen technology, and that's just how LCDs were back when this was made. Um, it doesn't really work that well outdoors. Now, with an AGS-101, you of course have the second brightness option, which makes it brighter, and that does help a bit, but it's not quite... Um, it, it doesn't make enough of a difference, in my opinion, to seek one of these out for, like, actually playing. On the 001, of course, the other brightness option just turns the light off entirely, which the DS also has this option, but that uses a transflective screen, which is also backlit. I did another video on that. I'll, I'll link it in the description if you're curious. Uh, that was more of a rant than an informational video, though, so just, you know, heads up. Um, and I guess that is another way to tell if you have access to the actual unit or the seller can shoot a video for you. Uh, AGS 101 consoles, you have two brightness options, bright and brighter. That's it. AGS 001 consoles, the front lit one, you have two brightness options, off and on. That's it. Anything else in the console has been modified. So that being said, let's look at 
the third option and why I think it really doesn't matter which one you go with. Um, IPS kits. Now, when it's off, it's going to look pretty similar to the 101 in that it has a black back, um, but you might notice it's a darker black instead of like a dark gray, but when it's on, I think it looks the best out of all of them, and when installed properly, you have multiple brightness options and a significantly brighter option if that's what you want to go for. My personal opinion is of these three, this is by far the best looking, but if you're not modding your console, this is the one to go with. And Again, like I said in the beginning, if you're happy with your Game Boy, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you're going for collection purposes, you, you go for it. You know, whatever. It's it's fine. I'm. I, I'd be a hypocrite to say it'd be dumb to do that because, look at me. I've got plenty. Um, you know, if you're trying to verify a purchase, that's also another thing entirely. But. Point being, it's not worth spending the extra on this console because 2005 LCD technology looks bad. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with these Game Boys and all you're used to is like your smartphone or something, you're going to have whiplash when you look at this screen. It is not a good screen. It has plenty of documented problems, including um, ghosting, poor viewing angles, um, well, generally just ghosting and poor viewing angles, but compared to something like a smartphone, it's really, really not that bright. Uh, so I think if you're trying to like actually play your Game Boy, and you already have one and you're happy with it, just, you know, whatever, who cares? You know, if you're happy, that's all that matters. But if you're not happy with it, don't bother looking for one of these, assuming you already have one of these. Just jump straight to this, put an IPS kit in the thing and call it a day, it'll be heaps happier. If I kill the lighting, I think that'll illustrate the difference between these quite a bit more. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really, I don't know. I don't really know what the point of this video is. I, I see people asking uh, quite frequently, how can I tell the difference between AGS 101 and 001? And the question bothers me because I think it's asked for the wrong purposes. And I don't really know that my response is appropriate, so I tend to not respond. But I think that should cover just about all the ways to tell the difference between an AGS-101 and a 001. And again, you know, if anything deviates from this, your unit's probably modified, so it's not quite the most reliable. Um, one more thing to check. I should have gone over this. Uh, a way to tell if a console has been reshelled, because I've seen scammers do this. They'll take the more expensive Game Boy, put it, you know, harvage, ha harvest the insides and do whatever they will with it, and then put a cheap Game Boy inside of it, because the price difference between these two consoles is pretty significant. Uh, I don't know what it is right now, and it also depends on how much an IPS kit is, but sometimes the price difference between these two consoles is enough to justify just buying this and the IPS kit, and then you get the best result all around. Um, but one thing to look at if you're trying to determine if your console's been reshelled is a lot of people can't get these little rubber feet out properly, and I did pretty good on this one. I got four of them right, but this last one, I just, I just barely nicked it in the corner. So if you see something like that around the uh, screw covers on the console, that's a good sign that it has at least been opened, not necessarily reshelled. Uh, if you're looking at it, look at the screws. If they look uh, like stripped out or anything, both of them, the, screw, the battery cover and that little tri point right there. If they look stripped out, they probably are, and someone's probably tried to get in there. Um, most people who are trying to scam don't exactly take the most time and care to do it properly because they're just looking for a quick sale. Uh, 
Not to say there aren't exceptions, because there are, but, you know, check it out. It's, it's easy enough to spot, especially if you have it in hand, but if you have it in hand, generally you can tell the difference between an OEM shell and an aftermarket one. I don't have a good or bad example of an aftermarket one on my desk, um, but one more thing especially to pay attention to would be the sticker region. Again, they are completely region free, but the sticker itself might look different depending on which region it's from. So as an example, I have a Chinese Game Boy Advance sticker, Japanese Game Boy Advance sticker, and a US Game Boy Advance sticker. I don't have a European unit on hand to compare, but I'm sure there's plenty of uh, references on the internet if you want to look it up. But anyway, sorry for the rant, but I had to get it out of my system, and I hope this helps something, someone, somewhere, I don't know. I hope this helps. But anyway, yeah, make sure to look up uh, the AGS-101 consoles in, for the region. Because like I said, the, the colors specifically aren't all unique to a region, if that makes sense. No, that's probably a dumb way to word it. Um, like I was trying to say, okay, in the US, pearl pink, pearl blue, and onyx? Graphite. Pearl pink, pearl blue, and graphite are AGS-101s in the US. In Europe, for example, they had the tribal tattoo one. That was also a 101. The pearl pink was a 001 and a 101. I don't know. So yeah, just try and, try and look at the big picture, not just one individual item and decide, oh, that must be what I'm looking for. And at the end of the day, if you're having fun, that's all that matters. So thanks for watching. Hope this helps. Sorry for the rambling. Catch you next time.